Well, the future of the American banking system hanging in the balance as reform is debated in Washington. It's certainly heating up. What's the future for the system? What do the bankers want? Let's bring in Ed Yingling, the president and CEO of the American Bankers Association. Uh, Ed, thank you for being here. You represent thousands and thousands of people in the banking industry. Your take, first of all, on what Mr. Volcker and the president proposed just a few weeks ago, essentially uh, what some would argue is a reinstatement of a partial glass steagall I think the hearing yesterday in the Senate Banking Committee was very interesting on this subject, and it was quite clear from that hearing uh, with both Democrats and Republicans that they are interested in the spirit of what Paul Volcker uh, proposed but it really doesn't look like they're going to take it in detail and put it in this bill. I think one thing is that they wanted more flexibility. They didn't want to have hard and fast rules that couldn't uh, help them in the future as things changed. But I think the most important thing is there's a recognition that this has to be coordinated internationally. Sure. International regulatory bodies are looking at these same rules, and you don't want to lock the U.S. Uh, banks into a system that could put them in a, at a competitive disadvantage. At the World Economic Forum in Davos last week, I spoke with a number of bankers from around the globe, including uh, the folks at the helm, Bob Diamond of Barclays, also right. Stephen Green of HSBC, also Vikram Pandit of Citi, and, and they had right. very different feelings about that reform in terms of uh, separating commercial banking uh, and also proprietary trading. Citigroup, right. Vikram Pandit, was a bit more in favor of that. Citi's a different right. bank now than HSBC and Barclays. So how do you get all of the bankers on the same page for this? Well, I don't know that they have to be on the same page because they don't get to vote. So uh, I think within the industry, one of the issues is they're trying to understand what the definition of proprietary trading uh, will be. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, I think in the end now it's pretty clear that legislation in the United States won't have a hard and fast definition. Uh, what they're more likely to do is what the House bill actually uh, has already done, is say to the regulators, this is an issue, you need to look at it, you need to address it, and you have the tools, if you think it's risky, to address it. How can we move forward without a clear definition of what proprietary trading is? How, how can we move forward then? How can there be effective reform? You do that by having uh, terms that say these are the kind of things we want regulators to look at, but you can't write into legislation a, a hard and fast definition that could foresee everything that might be done in the future. And that's one of the problems with trying to write it, a hard definition into the law. And you're also going to have to give the regulators some flexibility to coordinate their eventual regulation with what's done internationally. Major news this week out of AIG that it will pay roughly a million dollars in bonuses to those in its financial products division. Uh, I sat down with Sheila Bear, the head of the FDIC, just a few weeks ago, who said, listen, these outsized bonuses are just inappropriate at a time like this when banks need to focus on the real economy. What's right. your take, Ed, on the compensation picture at this critical moment? Well, it's certainly a hot issue, and I think everybody understands why, why people are concerned about it and the signal it sends. I think there is a, a real understanding now among the leaders of the financial services industry that the bonus issue is a hot button. Uh, you still have questions about the ultimate size of the bonuses, but I will say that in talking to leaders in the industry, they are committed and are moving to change the compensation structure uh, to get rid of the uh, uh, riskiness of the compensation structure, to have a structure that does not encourage risk, that discourages mm -hmm. risk. So I think a lot of changes are being made, but certainly we understand why the public's still concerned about it. Certainly. Ed Yingling, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you.